previously on WandaVision. The talent show fundraiser is the most important event of the season, and I want us to fit in. I actually don't know what I'm doing here. I'm Wanda. Geraldine. Wanda, can you read me? Oh. Something strange happened with Dottie. Something strange happened. Before that, too, it's hard to explain. It wasn't so hard to fit in after all. What is it? No. Is this really happening? Yes, my love. So here we are back for another review of WandaVision with episode 3, titled Now in Colour, releasing only a matter of hours ago. This episode was set in the 1970s with a Brady Bunch inspiration that left the episode with a very fun and kooky vibe. Before I talk about the episode as a whole though, notice the intro and how, like the previous two episodes, it featured a lot of hexagons. First, the word hex in hexagon refers to Wanda's hex powers from the comics, and secondly, the shape has six sides, six vertices, and six angles. Yep, that's right, 666. Another easter egg that hints at the devil himself, Mephisto, being the overarching antagonist of the series, and the puppet master of Wanda's not-so-perfect little world. The plot picks up a mere 12 hours after the second episode and follows Wanda and Vision's rapid journey through pregnancy, as Wanda's contractions begin to create some strange happenings around Westview. Although these contractions should be the least of Wanda's problems, as our unusual couple start to notice that the town they live in is not quite what it seems. Wanda's accelerated pregnancy is presented in the episode in a very funny way to match the 1970s sitcom vibe, and it's interesting to see how Wanda and Vision are very aware of the fact that it's only last night that she got pregnant, so the trouble they face is to try and keep it a secret from the neighbours. Speaking of neighbours, Agnes takes a backseat in this episode as we get to see a lot more of Monica Rambeau, or as she calls herself in this little pocket dimension, Geraldine. It was nice to see more of her character, as both me and Brandon had a lot of questions in regards to her presence in the second episode, but I'll get onto that later as I talk more about some of the weird world breaking stuff. We get to see a new character in this episode in the form of Wanda's Doctor, who interestingly enough, bears witness to Vision's super speed, but although he's a little rattled afterwards, doesn't seem to question it. Is he in on the obviously present sinister plan as well? Throughout the episode, we see Wanda and Vision prepare for parenthood, and when it comes to deciding on the baby's name, Wanda wants to call it Tommy, while Vision prefers the name Billy. This is obviously a reference to the couple's twin children from the comics, Tommy Shepard and Billy Kaplan, who we later see as Wanda gives birth towards the end of the episode. In the comics, the twins' creation actually involves Mephisto, but Brandon will be making a video on their origin and how it might play into the show sometime soon. Interestingly enough, the name of the firstborn, Tommy, making him the eldest in the comics, is actually Billy, who's the eldest of the two. But of course they're twins, so not that it makes much difference to anyone but Wanda and Pietro. You know, I'm 12 minutes older than you. <laughs> Go. Now speaking of Wanda's twin brother, Pietro, also known as Quicksilver, he actually has a pretty huge name drop, along with his killer, Ultron. He was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? This happens after the twins' birth when Wanda mentions that she also has a twin and had a brother who died. This seems to unlock Monica's mind as she says that she knows that he was killed by Ultron, which does not make Wanda a very happy sorceress. And she questions what she said and why she has a sword on her necklace, the same symbol that Wanda saw on the toy helicopter in episode 2 just before she launches her out of Westview back into the real world where she is surrounded by sword agents. Also, not that it's often to be trusted, but the cast list for WandaVision on Google does list James Spader as the voice of Ultron. So, could he be returning for a cameo? After all, he is one of Vision's many parents, so he could visit in a later episode to see the grandkids. The whole Monica Rambo situation is not the only thing that happens in this episode that makes Wanda and Vision question the reality they live in, so let's get into all of those. The first of many strange happenings is where their neighbour Herb is trimming the hedge and ends up cutting through the stone wall that separates their houses, which just goes to show the weak fabrication of this reality and how it's slowly but surely crumbling over the course of the show. And it's also worth noting that the shape of his cut kinda looks like a sword, right? I don't know, either way, this whole sequence just feels like a glitch in the Matrix. 
Later on, Vision starts to question the strange events that have happened in the previous two episodes. And just as the couple start to think that something may be wrong with their lives, it cuts back in time and changes the course of events. Now this time, it doesn't seem to be Wanda changing it, but more of a natural cover-up, perhaps created by the potential puppet master of all of this Mephisto. Another example of where this show hints at this sinister undertone is after the babies are born and the doctor walks outside telling Vision that he's decided not to go in holiday, saying, Small towns, you know, so hard to escape, which is obviously a reference to the couple's captivity in Westview. Directly afterwards, we see Agnes for the first time in this episode as she's talking to Herb about Monica, as Vision, suspecting that something is wrong, goes over to them. Now, I couldn't quite pick up on much of what Agnes was whispering, but I did manage to catch her saying, What is she doing here? Which clearly means that Monica is not supposed to be there. After Vision confronts them, we hear a few odd things. Agnes once again mentions her yet-to-be-seen husband Ralph and how he looks better in the dark, perhaps suggesting a scary red face and evil grin? The two of them start implying some things about Monica's presence to Vision, stating that she's here alone and she doesn't even have a home. Herb then starts trying to tell Vision she came here because we're all, before he's stopped by Agnes and we're left wondering, we're all what, all dead, all robots, all sorcerers, illusions, Hydra, devil worshippers, from another universe? Seriously, I need to know, it's actually killing me. But the fact that we don't know what he was trying to say is irrelevant. The main takeaway is that Herb doesn't seem to be as committed to the plan as Agnes, and that makes him want to watch in the future. Although it wouldn't surprise me if we mysteriously never see him again. Vision then returns inside to tell Wanda, but she seems to be in some sort of creepy, crazy trance after booting Monica out of Westview. The aspect ratio then changes as we see Monica getting yeeted out of Westview, which appears to be an actual place with sword facilities set up just outside. One last thing to finish the breakdown, this episode, like the previous two, has an ad break that this time promotes a luxury bath powder called Hydra Soak. These ad breaks seem to be a symbol of Wanda hiding things that cause her trauma in a space that exists separately to the world she and Vision are living in. So, that wraps up the breakdown and review for episode 3. Both Brandon and I absolutely loved it, and to be honest, this is the most excited I've ever been for an MCU project, and can't wait for next week's episode as we jump into the 1980s. We'll be talking more about the episode on this next week's podcast, so make sure to stay tuned for that, coming Monday. Apologies for the lack of videos this week as we were having some technical issues, but we've managed to fix it and we'll be back to normal this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw here today, then maybe consider subscribing to catch our other content as and when it releases.